I just finished reading a book last week called Bitcoin for the Befuddled. And, oh, yeah. Um, and I, I, I really liked it. I've read a couple of other books about Bitcoin, but I think this was the first one that really assumed no prior knowledge of things like cryptography or um, proof of work and all the other things that go into um, uh, Bitcoin technology. And at the same time, attempts to really like go in pretty deep into how, how Bitcoin works and how the blockchain works. And they did it in a, in a fun way. It's a, it's a combination of, of text and comic books that are like kind of metaphorical analogies of, of how Bitcoin works. And so there's this alligator named Crowley and he's kind of like the main character and is a, a Bitcoin user. And, um, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is like this guy with a paper bag over his head who he interacts with. And so I really thought like of all the books I've read and all the online stuff, if you want to understand Bitcoin, this is the one to get. And, and I particularly like the last chapter, which was like looking at the year 2030, when a lot of uh, technology and communication systems um, will be uh, uh, run using block, blockchain technology and kind of like these, these bidding auctions where where autonomous systems and organizations that don't have any human operators would be like bidding for humans uh, attention and money so that they could keep keep on going like Crowley the alleg crocodile walks out of his house and there's like these little robotic lawn mowers that are begging for Satoshi's to uh, <laughs> to mow the guy's lawn and uh, just kind of whimsical things like that but um, you know introducing people to the idea of you know, like a, a, a fleet of Uber cars, of, of self-driving Uber cars that um, don't have any like humans running the corporation. These cars are basically programmed to maximize the amount of energy in, in their, their system and, uh, you know, have enough money in reserve so that they can repair themselves and things like that. So I love that part of it. And I also like just the kind of meat and potatoes descriptions of how things work like, like hashing. I never, I, I mean, I've heard of the term hashing, but I never knew what hashing was until I read this book and, uh, good descriptions of, uh, of different kinds of encryption. Um, they, they make an, I think the part that they, they tried and, and didn't work for me at least was elliptic curve, uh, cryptography. That was like, it, it, it I lost it. Um, they made a valiant effort and spent quite a bit of time in the book talking about that kind of cryptography. And, and I got part of it, but after a while, I've just like, I'm not getting it. And I kind of skipped about 10 pages and got to the next chapter. Yeah. I mean, I, as you're talking about, it, I'm kind of realizing how much of Bitcoin I don't really understand and how much I kind of just take for granted, like, oh yeah, you know, there'll be this thing that you can split up into infinitely small pieces or and have these very small transactions i guess but i mean how does it really work how is it uh being managed or or run and yeah and i think this book is is good at at explaining that how you can have a system that works without uh in theory without human control and um there are no gatekeepers. Uh, there's no bank or middleman man to to take a, a hefty transaction fee or block a transaction. All you have to do, I mean, anyone in the world can do it. There's no there's no way to stop a cross border Bitcoin transaction. It just happens, and so um, I think th uh, businesses, uh, financial institutions, are starting to look at Bitcoin, and it could be. We could have this future where we have Bitcoin or some other kind of similar blockchain powered cryptocurrency where people don't even realize that, that they're using Bitcoin. They're just like sending money overseas and then the banks um, make a, a domestic transfer uh, exchange to Bitcoin, then transfer it overseas and then it's re uh, you know ch changed again into the local currency over there. And then they can just like get around all kinds of, of uh, expensive uh uh, financial transaction systems and um, 
kind of regulations that are set up for for traditional currencies. It's fascinating, and you know, there's so many things at play. There's like the Bitcoin Foundation. There's like core developers. There's the government who's interested. There's the miners, which are an increasingly small group of people with more and more powerful computers who are doing the kind of proof of work to validate transactions. And I think you've probably heard of these kind of farms of, of very specialized hardware that are doing the, uh, uh, it's kind of like guessing a, a number to figure out, uh, is the, the proof of work involves basically guessing this astronomically huge number and um, the amount of hashing power that these that this hardware has like dwarfs all the supercomputers on the planet and so these guys are increasingly powerful in in the bitcoin community and have a lot of say in any changes that are made so it's a fascinating fascinating book yeah it sounds interesting i mean i think that bitcoin still has a lot of work to do to get to be really fluid throughout every throughout the world but yeah it's it's definitely gonna be here like the concept is is like has a lot of staying power it's, yeah it's, it's definitely something that's gonna be a part of the world definitely the concept's here to stay and you know i, I mean as, as bitcoin currently stands by design it cannot process more than seven transactions per second globally mm. compare that to visa i i read that it's maximum um transaction capability is 54,000 transactions a second. So huh. Bitcoin would have to change in a big way if they wanted to turn it into something like Visa. The, the, the other option would be to have kind of side chains that have a, cur a currency pegged to Bitcoin and it could make tons of transactions and then kind of reconcile later on with, with Bitcoin. But that, uh, you know, t t has a little centralization and human control to things. But you know, things evolve in, in that way. And as, as things get more useful, naturally, people want to like have a little more control when they develop new new ways for it to, to make to make use of it. I'm surprised Visa doesn't have more capacity than that, but I guess not. I mean, who well, knows? maybe they do. I, I, I've I've read various numbers, you know, some I've read like 7,000 transactions a second. The latest one I heard was 54,000 transactions a second. Um, I've talked to other people too, who, who've said that they think 54,000 is low and that, you know, uh, Christmas, uh, you know, December 24th, these has got to be handling more than, than 54,000 transactions a second. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, um, let's go on to, uh, your next pick.